Hey guys, I'm good to go to measure run out on my brake rotor. What you need to do, and I'm gonna tell you about the setup, is just spin the wheel and take a look at your instrument readings. Start spinning the wheel, say at the valve or some other landmark, so you can so you know when you rotated it once fully around. Let me get you closer so you can see the instrument here. We're gonna take this reading together and then I'll show you the rest of the setup. Uh, something like that. So I can still spin the wheel and uh, zoom in a little bit like so. Thereabouts. Okay. So as for the instrument setup, uh, all you need to do is uh, make sure that the probe is uh, hitting is uh, in solid contact with the brake rotor and uh, make sure the tip of the probe doesn't fall into any of the vent holes on the brake rotor uh, item number two make sure your brake rotors are clean I just washed the whole wheel the brake rotors and the brake is not making any kind of noise there's no grits on it that could throw off the measurement that's important. This dial, you can set it anywhere, really it doesn't have to be zero uh, because I'm expecting that this brake is straight and uh, that would mean, sorry this brake rotor is straight and that would mean that it is within plus or minus four thousandths of an inch. This is a dial indicator that measures in thousandths of an inch. So. Let's spin the wheel around and see what we got here. You can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, it doesn't matter. That's one thousandth of an inch. One and a half thousand. It's going back to zero. Now going the other way, half a thousandth. Okay, and I'm back here where I started at the valve. I have the valve in my hand. So, one and a half in one direction and maybe half the other. So that's two thousandth of an inch. That's pretty good. Let's go. Let's go around again. That's about one and a half there, and about half there with all my goodwill. Okay, just make sure that you're not hitting the wheel. If you're just knocking on the rotor, it throws off your measurement. If you, uh, when you spin the wheel, make sure you spin it at an even, nice, uh, steady rate. Don't be, if you stop and go, the needle is, you know, the needle is swinging more than, uh, than it should. So when it's swinging more, it's pointing at a number greater than it should actually indicate. So I just go around nice and steady. And the rest of my setup, here is a sun shade or whatever big umbrellas, uh, cast iron base and I just clipped on this magnetic base on it make sure you set it up somewhere where it's not wobbly like like this this would be a this would be a wobbly even when it even when the magnet is on there okay you get the idea I also took a measurement running the probe on the inside uh, there is no inside circumference but just go with it inside circumference of the rotor and once on the outside circumference of the rotor because the brake pads are smaller than the width of the rotors the brake pads wear out the rotor in a in a path that is narrower than the width of the rotor so wherever you put the probe just try to stay away from the little ridge that's created by the brake rotors okay it's it's finicky I can't show you that because there's no ridge on this one whatsoever but you can feel it on yours it's about um, somewhere around uh, a sixteenth of an inch wide like two millimeters wide so kinda try to stay away from those and don't rub your don't run your probe on it because if the tip of the probe rides off it and on off or on it it's not gonna be good it's gonna throw off your measurement and uh, how did I get the bikes wheel up in the air <coughs> take a look at this sophisticated setup here with a 2x4 
and a piece of uh, I don't know a chunk of I-beam and the 2x4 here is short it's not gonna break because it is short the end of the 2x4 is soft enough so as not to damage the end of my forks and uh, this piece of I-beam is uh, not compressible for practical purposes so it's not gonna move anywhere it is set up on a solid firm and level base okay at the end of my 2x4 here there's a paving block that I took off the top of the wall here somewhere towards the end there and uh, this one is providing a little uh, lifting juice here otherwise the bike is still on its kickstand and still on its uh, rear wheel so it's got its three point of support one wheel kickstand and the 2x4 lastly the bike again is on a firm and level patch of concrete or something where the kickstand doesn't sink in okay and the bike doesn't move the guy the bike is also in gear and I locked the steering so I can't um, turn it off the 2x4 because it would be kinda hard to catch a bike so this is how I take measurements on a brake rotor it's uh, really unsophisticated just be creative a little bit and be safe whatever you do